Uh, first off, I'm gonna let you guys know I'm just gonna randomly talk to you because I find that that's what's best for me. Uh, it connects to the heart. Secondly, I am not talking fast, you're listening slow. There we go. Here's my big thing, whenever I come to these, I'm always contemplating what is the thing I wanna share. And I don't always know what it'll be or how I'm gonna hit you with it, but I do know at some point I want you to walk away with something that'll be beneficial for your life. It's the only reason I'm here, quite literally, is to serve you guys. Uh, but I do wanna kind of make sure I land points that you can take away and go, maybe that'll be useful, whether it's gonna be useful tonight, Tomorrow, six months from now, six years from now, who knows? Uh, and I can only talk from my experience and my perspective because that's the only one I've experienced in a perspective I see. So if something doesn't resonate, don't miss out on everything that I may say because the one thing doesn't match with your kind of version of how life works. I will say this, uh, I, I look at life and I kind of analyze and pay attention to people. My job literally is traveling places, meeting strangers, and telling them things about my life that no one should know. That's kind of my job. And so, from what I do, I go, man, I'm just gonna give you guys me, but I do know there are moments in time when I have conversations after I've talked with people who are always at this moment of, it's too much. I got nothing left, life's heavy. Anybody had it before? Maybe not now, but at some point in your life, I'm doing this hand thing so you can match my hand. Look how we do this. You got hands? Oh, there you go, it works, hey! I know you speak English, so you gotta lock in. So, I find that we get to these moments, but no one knows we're in the moment, right? We're just going through it, and then, I, Dads, I know what you feel like, because there's days I get up and my wife looks at me and goes, what's wrong? Absolutely nothing. But I am swimming in the background like, like a duck, feet under the water, just like, it's crazy. She doesn't even know that right now, but that's what happens. And I go, how can I give you guys a message that may land for that person right now or when you may get there? And I want to take you to one time in my life where I had that hit like in a really hard place. Uh, has anybody ever heard me speak before? Who, who's first time listening to me talk? All right, cool. Oh, that's a lot of you. It's like everybody. All right, let's do this. I'm going to give you a real quick synopsis of my life so you know who I am, and it'll like a lot more sense as I talk through it. Uh, at three years old, my mom decided she didn't want me or any of my, uh, my siblings anymore, so she shipped us off to the foster care system. I'm from California. There are 400,000 of us in the foster care system to this day right now. Now, when she subjected me to that, I wasn't aware, nor was she, of what the statistics were around a person like me going into that world, which are 75% of prison inmates in America are former foster kids. Half the homeless population in America have spent time in foster care. Less than 1% of us will ever graduate from college. So the moment I got shipped off to that ward, my life was headed downhill. It was, it was going there. I spent time in foster homes that weren't nice to me in a sense of like starving me, beating me, weird things. And it shut me down. I was very unhappy. Like at six years old, I didn't want to be around. And then I ended up on my sixth house with a family that's unique in a sense of how we function. I am the only black person in an all white, very poor family. So with a lot of weird jokes, I got an older brother who's Mexican, everybody else is, uh, is white, so we're one Asian short of a Disney Channel show. That's kind of a little joke we run with. Uh, we never got one, but it's okay. We're still working on it, right? So the idea is I had this craziness of life. I wasn't supposed to do well. My mom was also diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, so I'm in a situation where life is kind of like it's up and down. So at 14, I stand in front of a judge, looking at my biological mom, and I say, I no longer want you to be my mom anymore. Seven what's called parental rights. So now, I can do something interesting. When I was growing up in foster care, my biological mom wouldn't let me play sports, wouldn't let me take trips, like it was this weird thing she would do. And so at 14, I had this, this kind of like new lease on life, which was I could go out and hit people and not get in trouble. Now, it's called football, hold on. I didn't do anything crazy. I, I'll pop a pause, sidebar. I did get in a lot of fights as a kid because I was an angry little human, but now I can do it with a helmet on and I was allowed to do it. So I was like, I'm gonna do that, folks. So I'm in this world trying to navigate football, but here's what happens. I try the game, I suck at the game, I want to give up at the game, and I do. I check out, I'm done, I'm not doing this anymore. In a moment, kind of flips my mind around and goes, lean back in. So I lean back in, I pushed very hard, past ridicule from teammates, friends and family going, hey, you're not a football player, you suck at this, what are you doing? And I kept leaning in and eventually got really good. Got a star to play football at the University of Oregon. Uh, had my first son as a sophomore in college. Don't recommend that, so no. Uh, but here's the sidebar. He now runs track at the University of Oregon where he was born. Although he actually just is transferring to go run at Santa or Houston, uh, which is weird. I'm gonna have to wear a different color than green and yellow, which it makes me sick. So, uh, so in this world of navigating life, now football comes around, you know, I'm playing the game in college, I do really well, I get a blessed opportunity to play in the NFL. So I'm playing in the NFL, and NFL stands, you guys don't know for it, it's not for long. It's an interesting little acronym that I like to use because it's, it's true, folks. So I get in a situation where my rookie year, I'm with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers coach, John Gruden's my coach, now I want you to set this, this kind of stage. I was in a situation where I was away from my family, my, my wife and my son, for the first time in my life. I have no support. And these guys will tell you, your teammates, 
In camp, they are not your teammates. They're not your friends, like it's hard. Like you literally have to go to practice to like, hey, what's up, hang out with a person. And then like you meet them, let's say dinner or something, hang out. And then at practice, my job is to send you home somehow. Because if, if honestly, if it's either me or you get to eat. So I'm gonna hang out with you, but in practice, I gotta make you look bad. And it's a weird internal battle you have to have. So I'm dealing with this for the first time. It's also Tampa, Florida, where we were in Orlando, which is like the closest that God created hell in terms of heat on earth, I've noticed. So it's like 112, 150 degrees. It's like 80% humidity. It rains out of no, I don't know what summer showers were, which is like, it gets so hot that the, the earth goes, no, 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 and it brings rain down, right? So it rains when it's crazy hot, and all of a sudden, 20 minutes later, you have no idea it even rain, but you can't breathe. It feels like you're in a sauna. So I lost one time in practice 12 pounds of just sweat. So I'm uncomfortable physically, emotionally. My coaches, in case you didn't know, every day they go, if you don't figure it out, we're sending you home. So every day you're being told, you don't got a job tomorrow if you don't figure it out. I was done. I literally called my coaches for sure. I called my coach. I called my agents, which one's here. I don't know where he's at floating around. Craig's floating around somewhere. I was like, hey, uh, this whole football thing, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> I'm coming home. And so I called my coach to go, hey, do I still get a scholarship? So he says, yeah, but like my wife was weirded out. My coach was weirded out. My agent's like, what? You know? And so I get downstairs and I'm walking down the hallway and I can see in a room all the coaches meeting. And I'm walking to the hallway and all of a sudden something stops my feet. And I kind of get this like pause and I don't know what it was, but in the moment when I pause, there's one guy happens to walk out of nowhere. His name's Eric Vance. Eric Vance was like the head of player personnel guy. He's the guy that the players go talk to, not personnel, but the guy guys go talk to and they have like hard times. I was avoiding him, but he found me in the weirdest of moments. I don't think it was an accident. He goes, hey, trucks, man, what's going on? I go, man, it's just, it's heavy, man. It sucks. He goes, let's go sit down and have a conversation. So we go down outside, we sit down and have a little conversation. He goes, tell me your story. So I run him through my life and what I've done. I had you know, my son, and one other thing I didn't tell you about is like I had this dog tag that was like a little silver chain with an etched picture of my son on there. Because like for me, having a kid was interesting because I never felt like it was tough. I wanted to give back to a kid in a way that wasn't given to me. Like I get to be a dad, like this is super cool, right? And so I had this moment where I lose the chain of practice. I don't know where it's at. So like I had all this stuff that was going on. He goes, simple, he goes, what will you tell your son in 20 years? when he's considering quitting. And it poked me, like, in the best of way. And I go, man, I don't, I don't know. He goes, you shouldn't have to tell me anything but to keep pushing because you did. So I got up, I went back up to my room, and I looked at a, a, a calendar, had two more weeks of camp. It, it was the longest two weeks of my life, man. Uh, every day going to practice, I didn't want to be there. And every day going up and showing up, but here's the one thing I learned about life. Life responds to effort. I recently heard the statement, it's not mine, but it's like, life responds when you're in darkest places and the heaviest places to effort, not desire, not a wish. Yes, prayer, but prayer says, give me opportunity, I gotta work towards that. I found that life responds to the things I choose to give to it. So I leaned back and I did well. And I found out through life, like a lot of ups and downs after the NFL, because I hurt my shoulder a couple years later, I came home, I sort of figure out life and navigate these things. And I realized that there's also an interesting piece of how life kind of, kind of gives us information or gives us opportunities. But I find that life, it also is a sense of like faith is anchored. If you're here now, obviously you're tied to that, that sense of faith and I'm a Christian man. And I believe that that faith will find you anywhere, even when you don't want to be found. And for me, I had these moments where I was coming home from NFL. I don't know who I am without the game anymore. If football's done. Well, who's Anthony? I, all my life, I've been Anthony Trucks, football player. Now I'm just this guy. I can't do the game I love that built me to be this man that I am. And so I didn't know who I was and I ended up, I'll say, blowing up my life. I wasn't a good dad, wasn't a good husband. I was focused on things that were to serve Anthony, not myself in terms of the family unit. So I find myself divorced. I'm living in a 500 square foot studio apartment with my kids on an air mattress next to my bed. I'm like, this is not the life we should be living. And then an unfortunate thing wakes me up, which is I find out that my mom is having an episode. 17 years she had MS. And I find myself in a room with my mom, my dad, and my grandma, and we're watching my mom, her heart rate monitor decrease to where we watch her inhale and exhale fire breath on planet Earth. And this moment I'm sitting here and it genuinely clicked in of two things. One, it's gonna sound weird. I had a sense of joy because my mom was finally out of this, this pain she was in for a lifetime, but I had this deep sorrow for the fact that I wasn't the man that my mom was raising me to be. 
Because every one of us has someone in our life, I believe we are someone to someone, right? They look up to us, they, they look at us for joy, for aspiration, for power, they know us to be that person. And I had been that guy, but I'd fallen so far away from him that I didn't recognize myself. And so I go, I, I gotta lean back in. And some way I had to do it, and so I, I made a promise to myself, my mom, I'm gonna find a way to be a better man and give it back to the world any way that I can. So I leaned back in, I started doing some things. And I also found this other piece that, uh, that's crazy. When you've gone off track, the hardest thing to do sometimes is get back on track. Because you've, you've trained people to know who you now are, and when you want to push back to the great place, they go, no, no, this used to be you. You're there now. Well, you, don't, you can't come back. You, you're, you're over. You can't come back here. And it, it sounds odd to say it that way, but the people will go back on you, they'll poke fun, they'll do those kind of things. Because here's also the weird part. When you've done great things, people like to see you in the darker place with them. So when I was back home, people loved seeing that and not do well. It was cool, like, oh, look at him. See, he lived as great as he thought he was, right? I'm back in the little, and so it was hard to get back out of this place. But I'm gonna give you this thought that, that I think for me has been a really beautiful thought for me for life in the last probably three or five years, which is this. I think hard is the pathway to heaven. And there's duality to it. There's a spiritual base of it, which is God gave us this amazing world to walk around, but gave other people free will and us this crazy thing to navigate to create a sense of, of self through the hard work of being a genuine good person, a great Christian person, a great mom, great dad, it's hard. Like, as kids, it's hard for you guys. School is hard, taking care of your chores at home is hard. Parents, it's hard having you have to take care of your chores every day. It's like, just put your shoes away. Why put your shoes every day? Why can't you put your shoes away, right? It, it's hard on both sides, but also there's hardships that no one else sees. But I, I learned this kind of interesting thing about how I say it, it's the path to heaven, right? If you talk about a spiritual heaven, God gave us certain things with the battle through to be able to become a great person to get to the pearly gates and he goes, hey son, hey daughter, welcome home, right? On the flip side, I look at like heaven on earth and what I look at it as is I go, man, hard is a thing that none of us want to face, but there's actual both science and a concept you'll grasp. When you do a hard thing, for example, who's ever, women, who's ever given childbirth? Like, like given ch done childbirth, I don't know giving childbirth, it's weird. How could you give that, wow, right? Who's ever had a child? Okay, we got the idea. These, so have you ever found yourself in conversation with strangers talking about childbirth? Yeah. Oh yeah, you have. I've watched it, it's weird. I mean, I, I mean, I haven't had kids, so I don't know what it's like. like right? And then also, anybody ever seen, anybody know anybody who's ever participated in CrossFit? Anybody, or who, who here does? If you do it, you can raise your hand. I'm not gonna make you feel bad, I promise, okay. Right, who's ever done CrossFit, right? Who's ever done a really, really hard project at home for school, right? Here's what I've found. The things that we enjoy talking about the most are the things that were the greatest challenges we faced. Every one of us, the happiness, we, we seek in things of like, I wanna be happy, I wanna be joyful again, right? Life responds to effort. The hardest thing you give out to the world is the one that makes you go, yeah, I did that. I feel good about myself. But the thing is crazy, we avoid those things. We find ways to sidestep or make it easy. We don't just plow right into it and go, hey, I'm gonna figure it out as I go. So I've noticed for life is a lot of people, they step into life and go, why isn't it joyous? Why isn't it great? Why isn't it happy? Because you stop giving effort to the way that your life should be. You stop giving effort to the person that you wanna be in the future. You don't do the hard things sometimes. And so for me, I, I wanna give you this thought because what I realized was, if you can respond in the craziest, hardest moments with a little bit of, hey, I have no idea how I'm gonna do it, but I'm gonna take one step further, somehow, magically, life works out. So I'll take you back to the moment when I was sitting there with Eric Vance, having a conversation of all this stuff, and decided to lean back in. Now, what I haven't told you about is, like I said, faith will find you when you don't wanna be found, right? Life responds in effort, all these little things. I found myself going back to practice, it was a double day, later that day. Heavy hearted, body tired, I don't want to be there. The, the coaches literally told me like, you ain't gonna get in this team. Like that's the language they use as a challenge, it was crazy. And I remember walking in and like it was a wide world of sports in Orlando, which is like the Disney space. And you walk in and like, I'm by myself, there's no teammates, nobody's like, you know, hanging out with me, so to speak. And I get in and I'm walking back and kind of dodging people, eyes to the ground. And I get to the back and I imagine there's a row of lockers, these little itty bitty ones. And I look at you know, my shoes and my cleats, they had shoe dryers. I've never seen them before, is that you put your shoes on because it's so sweaty, they dry, right? I look at the shoes, do my thing, and as I'm, I'm kind of like li looking up, I catch a, a little glimmer, a little shine, right? <clears throat> and as I get my gaze at a full top, I look and hanging on my locker is the necklace with the picture of my son that I've lost. Had I quit that day, I'd never found it. 
And I found that for me, that, that little moment gave me a little bit of pause, a little bit of anchor going, God told me I'm supposed to be here right now. And so for a lot of us, you'll miss that moment if you dip out too early, but you don't lean into the hard thing. And I don't know what your heart is right now, but we all have a heart right now. And so I'm gonna tell you, repeat the same things. Life will respond to the effort you choose to give, no matter what it is you choose to give, right? At the same time, you've gotta understand that, that faith's gonna find you. When it finds you, be found. Be okay being found, because that connected me back to the sense of why I'm there, which isn't just for me. And then thirdly, heart is your pathway to heaven both spiritually, both in a happiness and joyousness of life. I think we're supposed to be given these hardships. And I'll give you a science little fact of this. There's actually studies that were done that found that, it's weird how they did it, but when you are faced with a level, it's called eustress, a positive level of stress, your brain in the middle of that actual situation will literally release a protein from the brain that encodes more of your dormant DNA. Which means when you are hit with hard things and you face them, your body goes back to find out how do I bring myself to be more of me and bring more out. And while it's a science thing, I go, man, at the end of the day, God made us. So what he unravels from your DNA, it's more of him who is within you. So face the hard things. Hopefully at some point it leads to hell. Thank you guys for letting me come hang and talk and share. And